to another episode of Flatmeister has some positive news for you. <laughs> Hi guys, Flatmeister here. Trying to be more positive, bringing you positive news about gaming. I don't mind roasting game journalists. Toasty! On the occasion. Well, more, more than on the occasion. Uh, but I saw this article on One Angry Gamer. Um, oh, it's not by Billy D this time. It's by guy uh, Ethan. Uh, there's this uh, game called Blister. The perfect automatic weapon for quick and deadly encounters. The Chris Vector, an unusual SMG firing up to 33 rounds at 1,200 RPM. The Vector can be tailored to any high threat situation. Oh, it made its appearance on stream, uh, Steam Greenlight back on the June 3rd of 2016. It's uh, by item underscore 42 is the name of the is the name of the studio. And uh, so that. Before diving deep into uh, development, the team wants to know your thoughts about first-person shooters and other things in relation to the genre by filling out a questionnaire. Said uh, the uh, the first-person shooter game aims to explore tactical SWAT gameplay set in the UK. Mm, what's this going to be like, sort of uh, the SAS? <laughs> weapon is worth its muster without extensive field testing. So for Queen and Country, it's time to engage the enemy. Uh, but see, uh, I'll, le I'll link this in the description, the... Uh the research survey. I mean, this is good. This is developers that actually care about the gamers. They want, um, they want people's input. They, they want to hear the gamer's voice. Let the gamer's voices be heard. <laughs> um, and this is good. So, um, as a quick rundown to what the question, uh, what kind of questions are asked within the document, the team wants to know, are you currently interested in playing single player story driven first person shooter games? Story. Yes. Good, um, good varied gameplay and gunplay, yes. Meaningful tactical options and choices, yes. Uh, and set in the UK. <laughs> uh, but this is cool, like sort of the SWAT style. Um, so yeah, like, like I said, with the SAS. And, uh, and when I read this article, it got me thinking of like ideas to suggest. Other questions elaborate on how appealing you find the idea of it set in the UK with the SWAT style. And what's the most important aspect of gameplay in a single player FPS to you? You can tick off boxes that sport the following answers on the document page. The quality and polish of the combat, a feeling of immersion and adrenaline, adrenaline rush, adrenaline rush, adrenaline rush in the game world, a sense of tactical control over a chaotic battle situation, a responsive and obedient team that carries out your commands, believable and unpredictable enemies that work uh, together against you, Fighting alone against waves of enemy, controlling a team to tactically take down difficult aggressors, and uh, and so it got me thinking. Like uh, that's one thing is AI because most of the stuff like, um, with Call of Duty is very much cinema, it's sort of cinematic set pieces. In corridor shooting, the enemies are pretty predictable. They go, who, who, you know, popping out of cover, get him in the head. Newer sort of modern shooter games really need to feel like you're pinned down by gunfire, um, and really feel the impact of bullets. And that comes again with sort of sound design as well. Like you really need to feel like oh, your character's been shot in the gut. You know, not just like a, a little flinch, like what happens on, and the screen gets bloodier and bloodier. You really need to feel like you've been, you know, or that your your body armor has absorbed a shot. Or where your shots, because it's it that is irritating with uh, shooters and they're just bullet sponges. At the enemies are bullet sponges, and that they've been shot a few times and they're not acting like they go. You know, just still shooting, shooting around like nothing's happened. I'm sure, like they've programmed the AI like when they've been shot. There's a few vocal. You know, voice. Ah, shit. Oh, shot. 
can't fucking believe this. Could everyone stop getting shot? Um, b barks. I think I think uh, developers call it uh, enemy barks. They're like little phrases that the enemies um, shout out. Little phrases that are context related, like "Oh, incoming grenade! I'm reloading! Cover me!" You know, things like that. They're little barks. <laughs> I'm being flagged. Things like that. Um, so yeah, AI is the one thing to make it feel believable, make it feel unpredictable. I had this idea. I think I spoke to um, I spoke to Switchpoint and Crumple Point um, after we did our last episode of the flat pack, and I said I suggested this idea of them having. So you got the missions. Uh, oh, your mission is to rescue the hostages. They're in this so and so embassy. Storm in, and it goes. But then you could also have like procedurally, not necessarily procedurally generated. The sort of the amb uh, ambient generated um, events that happen within the mission. So every single pl person's playthrough will be completely different. So let's say, for instance, so your mission, yeah, rescue the hostages. And what if they actually, rather than make them cookie cutter enemy, all the enemies are cookie cutter copies of each other, and that it, all the NPCs are like the hostages are cookie cut cutter copies of each other. Program. Again, with this sort of procedurally generated events that happen within a mission, program that each NPC has an individual personality, a bit like the nemesis, like the nemesis system in Shadow of War and Shadow of Mordor, is really cool. Each single NPC enemy is a unique person. So when when one certain small time small fry orc kills you. Well, he, he'll then have levelled up and he's rise through the ranks of the orcs when you respawn and he'll remember you like, oh, I fucking cut you, Dan. Look at me, nah. You know, really cool. And it really creates this sort of sense that all of the, all of the different orcs that you meet are different. They're all completely different, different personalities. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, imagine this, procedurally generated events within a mission that, are com that will be, always be different every time. So imagine one of the hostages tries to make a break for it and depending on where you are on the map and and have you been stealthy, you know, are you able to save that hostage or will they get shot? You know, will the terrorists have noticed the hostage um, ran out of the room and is run, making a break for it? Or uh, maybe a couple of the terrorists uh, are noobs that have been hired into the terrorist cell and they they bottle out at the last minute they're like oh fuck this we're getting we're getting ambushed fuck this and they try to escape they try and uh, run off um maybe they lose then some of the terrorists lose their nerve and they start executing a couple of hostages maybe like one mission there's a hostage negotiator that is there trying to negotiate and you've got your you know uh, you've got commanders telling you, right, move in now, and you're like, oh, I can't. Um, and so they're trying to push up the, push the time, the clock up, push you to, you know, charge in. You're like, oh, I can't. The negotiator and the hostages are putting him in danger. So all these different choices, like think like things like that would be really cool and would change up the, compared to like Call of Duty, with the, like I said, with the cinematic set pieces, it'd be really cool with each mission, and there's like other dynamic events that can happen at random like randomized mi uh, micro events you could call them you know randomized micro events or procedurally generated micro events that can happen in a mission and so um, each mission and each uh, engagement with the enemy or each combat situation will always be different no matter what to every single to every single player and obviously there's a certain limit as I don't know what. But I don't know, it's all up to the game developers, really. But it's a really cool uh, concept. I'm going to go through this research survey and I'm going to fill it in. A few moments later. So, uh, are you currently interested in playing single player story driven FPS games? Um, so the answers are yes, I am pr playing one right now. Yes, but I am looking for a new one to play. I prefer multiplayer games. Yes, I am playing one right now. 
I'm playing. I've got quite a few games on the go. Have you played any single player tactical FPS games before? Yes. No, but I want to try one. No, and I'm not interested. Uh, yes. Um, I've played. Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Operation Flashpoint. Um, Dragon Rising, I think it's called. Uh, which tactical FPS games have you played? Operation Flashpoint. Because, <laughs> I mean, that is like really in depth as to what you can do on that. Like you can get them to get into different um, formations and flash and you know you can order them about on the map. Get each individual um, soldier and unit in position. Have you played a game set in the UK before? Um, no, I I can't really think. Well, maybe like there's like some games where a couple of levels have been set in the UK. I can't think of any really. How appealing do you find the idea of a SWAT style game set in the UK? I find it extremely appealing. Sounds pretty cool. Like I said about doing like a like hostage um, like embassies. Uh, well, it was the it, was it the Iran embassy in the UK? Iranian embassy and it was taken over. And the SAS. Who dares wins? What's the most important aspect of gameplay in a single FPS to you? Tick all relevant boxes. Um, so yeah, quality and polish of combat, feeling of immersion, adrenaline. I'm going to probably tick all of them. A sense of tactical control over chaotic battle situation. Responsive and obedient team carries out your demands. Command, sorry. Believable and unpredictable enemies that work against you. Controlling a team to take down difficult aggressors. I don't know about fighting alone against enemies of wave, waves of enemies. That just sounds horde, you know, like horde, horde mode. Um, do you have any other comments that you would like to add regarding any of the questions above? Um, let's say I'll suggest it to him. Procedurally generated. <laughs> Procedurally generated micro events. No same mission will feel the same. I'm gonna submit my. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. Your response has been recorded. So there we go. Yeah. So, I've suggested, <laughs> what with this video, suggested that in the um, so uh, some of the top comment uh, four days ago from Luciano Mendes. There's no, there is need for feedback, and then there is laziness. A developer that does not know what it wants to do and asks everything about what the consumer wants, just seen like a non-focused team, and it can only bring low-quality products in the game. In the end. Someone corrected him saying, yeah, but they've laid out what they want to do, only let you select from those options. Don't think it's uh, lazy to figure out what you should prioritise. So yeah, like I said, you got Call of Duty cinematic set piece type levels and, and gameplay, and then you've got more in-depth ones. I mean, this sounds really cool. <laughs> On the next episode of Flatmeister. Agent Flatmeister. <laughs> So yeah, follow um, item underscore 42. Uh, I'll leave a link to uh, the, leave a link to the um, to the survey. You ought to fill it in, like I have, and I've suggested my things. So yeah, that sounds really cool. So yeah, I'm Flat Meister, I'll catch you in the next video. Don't forget to do all that like and subscribe stuff, you guys know what to do. Um, yeah, I'll catch you in the next video.